So this right here is the fresh new Nokia G22, designed for longevity. It's basically the Davy Attenborough of the smartphone world. It will cost you just 179 euros, so by current exchange rate, it's probably about 5,000 pounds. Just Josh and Kiddies, hopefully well under 200 quid, despite boasting pretty decent specs, including a 5,000 milliamp hour capacity battery and a 50 megapixel primary camera sensor. And apparently one of the Nokia G22's USPs is the fact that it can be easily repaired. So I am gonna attempt a bit of maintenance of my own. So if you wanna see me royally f up a smartphone, you've probably come to the right place. So here's my full Nokia G22 tour. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. So as I mentioned, this Nokia blower is designed for longevity. And part of that is a robust design. So around back, you've got 100% recycled plastic, which has this glossy finish. It does actually almost look like glass. This right here is the meteor gray color, but you can get it in the slightly nicer lagoon blue as well. I mean, seriously, is gray anyone's first pick for colors? If it's your favorite, let us know in the comments below, you big weirdo. But apparently that R10 has gone through quite a lot of durability testing, so hopefully it won't crack apart if you have to fumble and drop the bugger. And meanwhile, up front, you've got Gorilla Glass 3 to add an extra bit of durability to. And apparently the Nokia G22 is IP52 splash resistant as well, which is about as much as you can hope for for this sort of budget price point. So it should be all right in a bit of rain. Just don't go dropping it in your pint. And it is a 6.5 inch smartphone, quite sizable, especially as you've got those pretty thick bezels surrounding that screen. As you can see there, proper bit of Jimmy Hill chin action on the go. The display and the edges are perfectly flat, not too chunky, as you can see there. And it is your basic plastic frame stretching around the edges there. And overall, I would say that the design of the G22 is pretty smart for a blower that costs under 200 quid. Minimal branding around back. That camera lens doesn't jut too far from the arse end. And as for all of the repairability shenanigans, well, I'll save all that for the end of the video in case I completely muff this thing up. So the software and HMD Global always shoves a lovely stock vanilla version of Android onto its Nokia smartphones. No exception here. Don't expect anything in the way of frills or flair here on the G22. And it's probably just as well that HMD has kept it light because it is powered by quite a basic chipset. Sadly, it is still old and creaky Android 12 running on the Nokia G22 right now at launch time. HMD wasn't entirely certain when the Android 13 update would be coming, but they said probably soon. And you will get two years of OS updates and three years of security updates, which is pretty good at this sort of budget price point again. Although will that therefore only give us Android 13 and then 14 beyond that, or will we also be gifted Android 15? Only time will tell. You also have an edge-mounted fingerprint sensor here on the Nokia G22. This seems to be working absolutely fine. Not exactly super, super quick and responsive, but I do like the little animation that slowly fades in and out around that power button. And this is also backed by a bit of face unlock action as well, which seems to work at times. Sometimes it just can't be bothered. Good when it does work though. And it's pretty good news for the storage because you've got a choice of either 64 or 128 gigs of space. And as you can see, only 12 gigs of that used by the system. Very light indeed. Although I have noticed a level of crapware slowly but surely creeping onto Nokia smartphones. So you now have Booking.com on there, LinkedIn, Spotify, stuff that I most certainly did not install. Thankfully, you can uninstall this bollocks and get it right off there if you want to. So now let's check out the Nokia G22's 6.52 inch IPS display. And yes, it is IPS tech, like pretty much all smartphones again, for under 200 pounds. So unlike OLED screens, yeah, the contrast isn't quite as good because those blacks aren't quite as deep. The whites aren't quite as white. And the viewing angles certainly leave something to be desired, although I've seen a lot worse. And it is just an HD plus display rather than full HD. And that is kind of a shame because you can get a lot of full HD panels on smartphones for under 200 quid. I wouldn't say those visuals are particularly grainy, you just don't get as much fine detail packed into every frame as you do with a Full HD Plus panel. And likewise, unlike an OLED screen, you won't get those really poppy, punchy, vibrant colours either. But you know what? This thing is absolutely fine just for kicking back with a half hour of Netflix or Disney Plus in your downtime. Of course, if you want to watch a lot of movies on the go on your fresh new smartphone, I'd say maybe try and upgrade to a Poco, which tends to boast a better screen overall. The Nokia G22's panel does max out at 90 hertz refresh. Not that you can really notice, because to be honest, that chipset does struggle to maintain that sort of frame rate anyway. And yes, you do indeed have an old school nipple notch right at the top end of that screen. Just ever so slightly invading whatever you're watching when you do go full screen, but it's only a tiny bit, it's barely noticeable. A miniature mound, if you will. But what about the audio? Well, it is a simple mono speaker setup here on the Nokia G22, but let's bump up the volume and check it out. Oh. Please do plug subscribe.
didn't ding that notifications bell. Cheers. And yeah, I mean, it pumps out sounds. It's not particularly loud. It's not particularly good, but it's there if you need it. The main thing is that the G22 sports a headphone jack, which you won't find on many premium blowers these days. So that's always lovely. Now the limiting factor here on the Nokia G22 is unfortunately the processor that powers it. It's running on a Unisoc T-Series chipset, the T606 if you're particularly interested, and that's pretty basic to say the least. Just four gigs RAM here on my review model as well, although you do have memory extension, which just uses storage as makeshift memory when required. It's not quite as good, obviously. And if you're a benchmarking fan, that's the kind of scores you could expect from the fresh new Geekbench 6. So yeah, pretty basic stuff. All the same, because I like to be thorough in these hands-on sessions and also because I'm a bit of a masochist, I'm going to attempt to actually play Call of Duty on this thing. So let's cut to that. Okay, here we go. Please don't judge me too harshly. I normally suck pretty bad at this game at the best of the times, even when I'm playing on like a ROG phone or something. Oh, I killed somebody! Banana frickin' Rama. Ah, oh, god damn it. Well, that was somewhat inevitable. So I'm obviously just playing on low graphic settings with medium frame rates because that was the maximum level that was available using this phone. You know what? It's not terrible. The frame rate seems okay so far. The screen responsiveness is all right as well. So uh, color me surprised. Where the hell is everyone? Oh, you are so dead. Always helps when you're actually with a team who knows what they're doing. Oh, Jesus. Oh! Dirty little sniping, lurking git. Oh, shit. <laughs> Look, mate, I love you, kitty cat, but uh, you're, this is not a good time. Oh, we already won. Hooray. Not only did we win, but I came bloody second. Sign me up for the esports, buddy. So the performance of the Nokia G22 could probably never reliably be described as shit hot. But one area where it definitely excels is the battery life. Because you've got that very light stock Android experience, you've got that very energy efficient chipset, the 5,000 milliamp hour capacity cell that is crammed inside of the Nokia G22 should provide at least a couple of days of life per charge. As long as you're not absolutely bloody hammering this thing, obviously. And you've got 20 watt charging support, which is perfectly legit at this sort of price point as well. So good on you. Now, before I attempt to pull apart the Nokia G22 and even more daringly put it back together again, let's have a squint at that camera tech. And what you have here is a 50 megapixel primary camera sensor as helpfully etched into the actual chassis there. And don't get excited about the other two lenses there because it's just your basic depth and macro bollocks. And here in the app, you've got a pretty generous selection of camera modes. All of the obvious stuff you'd expect to find in there is there. So you've got your auto mode with a bit of HDR support. You can swap to portrait mode if you're trying to snap a living subject. This gives you a variety of different filters that you can play around with. So you can get some hearts or butterflies in the background, change up the level of bokeh effect. Don't expect to shoot away too merrily though because of that Unisoc chipset. As you can see there, the processing time is uh, somewhat cumbersome. Yeah, you've also got yourself a dedicated night mode for when things get a bit dim. So just hold the smartphone steady and that camera will try and suck up as much detail as possible. No dedicated pro mode on the Nokia G22 sadly, but you do of course have a macro mode using that two megapixel sensor. You've also got a regular video mode and a slow motion mode as well. It looks like you can only capture video at full HD, which is no surprise again, given that Unisoc chipset, I would be very shocked if they had 4K on here. But anyway, here's just a small sample of test shots that I snapped in my 24-ish hours with the Nokia G22, just to give you an idea of what the camera is capable of. Of course, in more testing conditions, it does struggle, as you'd expect. And if your subject actually dares to move about the place, well, you can expect fuzzy results, even in pretty good light. And then around front, you've got an 8 megapixel selfie shooter. Again, pretty basic stuff, but it should be absolutely fine if you just want to throw a pic of yourself up on the Facebooks, prove that you're still alive. And you can once again shoot up to full HD 1080p video using that selfie shooter as well. Audio pickup seems okay for a budget blow. Absolutely fine, should do your job for your bit of Skyping, your zooming, whatever you like. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's the part of the show you've all possibly maybe been waiting for if you just want to see me f something up and possibly injure myself as well. So I'm going to attempt to remove and replace the battery on the Nokia G22. All right, okay, so apparently the biggest points of failure on smartphones are the battery and the display. And apparently with the Nokia G22, you can actually physically replace both of those elements within a matter of minutes yourself using a couple of simple tools. 
HMD has partnered with iFixit so you can order any parts you might need for the G22 direct from iFixit with online guides as well to steer you through it all. Make sure you don't muff it all up and crock yourself and or the phone. So I've got my toolkit at the ready, screwdriver, a porky pin device, I've got a couple of other little wedgy bits here. And now I'm going to attempt to replace the battery here on the G22. And if I don't survive this, can somebody please tell my mum I love her? And I'm just going to time it as well, see how long this takes. Right. So first step is yank out that SIM tray. Now apparently I need to shove a pick in there. Oh, yeah, that sounds like something's happening. The display feels like it's about to pop off any second now. Oh, boom, there you go. But the fingerprint sensor is still connected, so we need to deal with that. Now we've got to get our wee little screwdriver and just get this screw here out. I can confidently say I'm 100% definitely not going to lose that thing. Just got to try not to sneeze, otherwise I'm completely f***ed. And now this is the bit that really terrifies me. We've got to f*** around with the electronics. Try and leave it this build. Oh, there we go. Now we need to unfasten the motherboard cover, which only involves about 12 f***ing screws. All of them as tiny as this bastard. Right, that is all of those tiny little screws. Now we just need to actually get this cover up. There we go, motherboard cover dealt with. Now it's finally time to remove the bloody battery. Oh, there we go. And the battery has been removed. Jerry rig everything, eat your cock out. Now we quickly slap in the new one, or in this case, the exact same one. And now back we go, just in reverse order. With a million pissing screws, of course. I didn't actually bloody lose any. And now we just gotta reattach the fingerprint sensor. Get in there, you absolute twat. All right, and now jam the bastard back together. Oh, that's satisfying. Sim train, and we're done. Stop the clock. How long was that? 18 and a half minutes. I'll take that. That's not too terrible. But now, of course, the pertinent question is, does the Nokia G22 actually still turn on? Well, let's uh, yeah, stand well back, kiddies. Power button is being held in. Oh, it vibrated. Oh, my God. Standard YouTube overreaction. Whoa. Oh, it seems to be fine. Should we see if the fingerprint sensor actually works? Yes, it does. I mean, come on, if even a cack-handed semi south twat like myself can do it, then surely any normal human being could do it. So it'll certainly save you a few quid off taking it down the shop, but you will need pretty decent vision and steady hands as well, because there are some tiny screws involved. And there you have it, my lovelies. That, in a nutshell, is the fresh new Nokia G22 budget-friendly blower from HMD Global, built for longevity. Should be hitting the UK soon for under 200 quid. What do you reckon? Are you tempted by the G22? It'd be great to see your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do plug, subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech. And have yourselves a ruddy, wonderful rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.